Sorry, um, Adi Opin. I'm afraid I cannot introduce you, and I don't know how to pronounce your name. Are you here? Can you join? Yes. Uh, Smith College will go right after that. Cool. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Y yes, we can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. We can see Hi. you. So uh, let me share a slide, uh, if I can. Uh, let's see. You should be uh, able to. All right. So um, what we are working on essentially is uh, uh, an oxygen concentration. So we are not working on ventilators, but what ventilators need, which is oxygen. We are a team of volunteers of about two dozen people that have worked since March. Uh, we have published our first open source design at the early May. And we have various collaborations with uh, multiple uh, teams in many countries like Peru, Afghanistan, and Guatemala for deployment of such concentrators. So why do we need uh, oxygen concentrators? So typically in a uh, country like United States, we have very uh, well-developed oxygen infrastructure. However, in developing countries, you don't have such things. So you need to look for alternative local ways of producing oxygen for your patients in the hospitals. The goal of the prototype is to enable people around the world to build their own prototypes as fast as possible. Uh, and we focused on simplicity and speed of build. So as soon as you get the materials in a uh, mail, you should be able to build this ventilator, uh, this oxygen concentrator in, in about an afternoon. The cost is very low. Uh, in bulk, we aspire for a $100 um, oxygen concentrator for five liters per minute at 90% concentration of oxygen. So uh, how to build it? You just follow the published documentation check out the bomb, check out the local source for your uh, materials that you can get. Some of these have to be gotten from China, like zeolites, but uh, generally uh, we published a detailed bomb on how to achieve that. Then after building prototype, you have to validate oxygen concentration and flow. And for that, you need a good reference oxygen sensor, which is also expensive. Unfortunately, that's the way of life you have to the quality of your design depends on the quality of your calibration. Uh, you have to think about your own risk assessment and anal analysis. And thanks, Peter, for uh, Pierre. Sorry, for <laughs> thanks, Pierre, for help here on the temp on uh, creating this template for uh, RA and uh, QA analysis. Uh, that one has to be used by any person or company that takes this design and builds it. And finally, you have to document and iterate your own design and publish your, hopefully finding, publish your findings to the community. So as we said, we have collaborations with the team in Peru. Uh, we also have uh, started collaboration with a manufacturing company uh, in Afghanistan uh, for uh, a large deployment on, on a number of hospitals over there. And we just started uh, collaboration with Guatemala as well. Uh, they, again, the priority there is getting as much oxygen as possible to, uh, to hospitals. Uh, and we are already working on the next version. Uh, we have a fairly sophisticated simulation software. Uh, we have a number of uh, designs for hardware and software uh, uh, control for the control board. Now we are iterating towards adding, uh, uh, focusing on user experience uh, by adding a three inch uh, touch screen for med diagnostic messages, regardless of the language that this device is intended to, uh, adding a medical grade buzzer uh, and most importantly, adding an auto-tuning process in software. So you can essentially, the device itself will adjust valve timings and, uh, to uh, work with uh, variable changes in, uh, uh, in the compressor, or in pressure. So that's about it. Uh, any questions? I have a question. Do you want a Ventmon? I'm sorry, what? Would you like a Ventmon? device which measures oxygen concentration, flow, and pressure? Oh, sure. Uh, we are looking at various variants. Uh, I think we are working on someone uh, developing a number of sensors. What you use is a $15 sensor from China, which measures concentration to 0.1% and also measures flow up to 10 liters per minute. The goal for the whole thing is $100. So, <laughs> so if you get, get an even cheaper sensor, I'm really happy to look, take a look. Okay. What is the fastest flow rate that you guys have? Oh, I think I see it down here. Is it five liters? So five liter is a bit conservative. I think we can get a bit more at the moment, uh, but we really want to get it at 9%. So five liters, essentially the whole thing looks like a bucket and it looks 
kind of uh, uh, inexpensive looking uh, device, but uh, you can actually put multiple of such devices in parallel and uh, just scale out the, the production if, by just put, building more devices. Who are you uh, working with in Guatemala? Sorry, last question. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, I, to remember my name. <laughs> I think Robert, uh, uh, let me see if I can figure out. Um, uh, Roberto Gerardi. He's, he's working with number of teams in Guatemala. Oh. Uh, I have a question to Adi. Your... Coming from a you know, risk and safety background, working in oxygen rich environment, right. always raise a new set of requirements in terms of electrical safety, risk of fire, et cetera. Yep. Exactly. Is it something you have looked in? Yeah, we have looked at that from since the very beginning. So um, at 40% uh, FIO2, which is what we are currently having, uh, it's probably less of a risk, but if you go to 90%, it's really important that you're using oxygen compatible plastics. Uh, valves, fittings, gaskets, uh, seal rings, and all all the materials involved had to be uh, auto compatible. So we are looking at, uh, we have a number of volunteers that have looked already at that, and we already put that into the bomb. Uh, okay. Essentially, we use Viton gaskets, use only certain types of plastics, uh, and that that's already a, a concern in even in commercial units. You have to make sure you're using uh, specific grades of plastic. Okay. Have you, have you also considered potentially, you know, the um, explosive gas? I know that when you work in anesthesia, which I believe may be an application for this kind of product, you can be mixing oxygen with anesthetic gas as well. And then you need, you need to be looking at sparks and all those sort of things. Uh, so we, we do have a check valve at the end of the device, which prevents flowback of any mixture, any, any combustion mixture into the device. So as a, 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 even commercial units have a check valve at the very end, so you cannot get uh, anything back. Uh, so so we have a number of safety features that you look at to make sure that no uh, 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 mixture, like even water is a big contaminant. You don't want that into the uh, zeolites. You don't want uh, any of these things it will reduce the efficiency of the filters. So you have to be careful about uh, anything that comes back. So for that, we have a check valve. Pierre, can I just observe that um, there's no use of explosive anesthetic gases um, anymore anywhere around the world, as far as I'm aware, um, even in the most impoverished um, environments there. They're sticking to old fashioned gases like halothane and isofluorine, which are terrible um, CFCs, but they're not explosive. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah, any more questions? Uh, there, uh, there was one on the Q&A. Um, how, how far along are you with the EUA or have you got any kind of processes in place for approval? Oh, uh, for for uh, uh, I'm sorry. Can I, can you repeat the question? How far? I cannot are you... see the chat for some reason. <laughs> How far are you with uh, the EUA, or or any kind of regulatory sort of approach? Uh, we we have not uh, worked on the on that area. We have only worked with Pierre and his team and uh, a, a few other people on um, uh, getting uh, an initial regulatory. Uh, sorry, an initial uh, risk. Uh, assessment and analysis. Uh, we have not looked at uh, uh, those uh, aspects of regulatory aspects, but we work with a number of uh, people that, for example, with a um, manufacturing company that already has experience in, uh, in that area. All right. yeah, uh, that's all I have. <laughs> okay, thanks. Well, I'd really like to